Lord, you are worthy to be praised. God, we come before you in your presence this morning. And we want to thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for today. Hallelujah, Jesus, for your word that will be delivered today. We ask you, Lord, to bring the meal and bless it, O oh God. To each of the soil that will be planted in it, O oh God. We ask you, Lord, strengthen it, O oh God. Let your will be done, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. We give you the honor and the praise that is due to you and to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let us open our Bible this morning. Uh, the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Mark, chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. It says, And he taught them many things, by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Amen. You can have a seat. This morning, my topic that I want to talk about is the parable of the sower. Amen. Anyone here is a farmer? I come from a family, there's a lot of my family, they are farmers. My grandmother was and my grandfather. Do you know what the farmers they do? Farmers' responsibility for all stage of plant growth, including planting, fertilizing, watering, and harvesting crops. That's what they do. For example, back in my country when I was young, I used to see a lot of farmers and I used to see my grandmother and my grandfather, they, they leave the house before the sunrise. They go up on the mountain to, for, to, to go and farm. And I used to wonder, why do you have to go up so early in the morning? They always said, it's so easy to do farming when, when the, before the sunrise because it's not hot, but because when it's hot, because in Fiji it's a very hot country, when it's hot, it's very hard to do farming, like your body can handle, can handle the, the heat, so it's better you do it before the sunrise. So that's why they, they leave early, and once the sun are going up, they're coming back. So I, I used to watch them most of the time. I go with them sometimes, I see them, they weed the grass, they plow and plant any crops that you know they, they plan to plant. And most of the time they, they fetch the crops that are ready to be used in the family. And sometimes most of, uh, most of the crops that they get, we used to sell it to some family or we share to some family that, that needed it. The farmers, they do a lot of work it's not easy to be a farmer because sometimes it will depend on the soil, it will depend on the weather, and it will depend on the time. It takes a lot of effort and also it takes a lot of patience. Every farmer, whatever they plan, they will expect good results. And yes, they will also expect the best. But in their mind, they will always aim when it comes to harvest, they will harvest the best crop. Sometimes crop takes ages to grow and sometimes when it's harvest time, some farmers get upset because their crop doesn't produce more, maybe because of the soil, maybe it's been raining a lot, or insect eat the crops. But when it's harvest time, sometimes it's really good. For farmers, when they see problems happening in their farm, they will have to come up with a solution. 
you know, if it happens regularly, so they will have to think, okay, what shall we do? Can you imagine when you work so hard planting a crop and then you're expecting it, okay, in a few months time, I'll be expecting this crop to be harvested. And when that time comes, it doesn't happen. The bitterness and the hurt that gets to them because they don't get what they wanted. The frustrated comes. So, for that, they have to come up with a solution, what to do, so that they don't have to keep on going back. And when going back to harvest time and problems happen over and over. But when I see that, uh, when I see farmers, I like that. It's, you know, it's interesting. I've been with my family, with my grandparents. I've, I've done that, those kind of, those uh, work. Maybe some people, some kids are like with me in that time, they don't, they're not interested in it. But I kind of like it. The Bible says that Cain was a farmer. Noah was a farmer because he planted a vineyard. Farmers, they, they look after their farm, they check the crops so they don't get disease, plow fields, sow seed, and harvest crops. Also, they fertilize, the fertilizer are used to improve the plant growth. The healthier the soil is, the faster the plant grows, and also fertilizer improve the supply of nutrient into the soil. Sometimes soil becomes depleted and that's why farmers add fertilizer to replace the lost nutrients you growing plants continue to need. Farmers give their life give their life to in their field of farming and because they know the work and what they're getting so they put everything into their farm. It's a source of income helps a lot with family and many other things. And you can see there's a picture of some people that do farming. Look at that lady, what she was doing. It's kind of a hard job, right? Is there any other picture of them farming? Look at that man farming. <laughs> I haven't done that, but um, farming in, in the water, planting, I think that is rice that he's doing. And that man doing farming in the water as well. Amen. If you see this, these pictures, can you imagine, like if you think, put it in your mind, what God does with our life. Amen. Jesus is a farmer. The Bible says in Matthew 13, 24, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sow good seed in his field. Amen? When Jesus was um, teaching his disciples and the people, you can see that he taught in parables. A lot of his teaching, he, he taught in parables. He was, um, he was a greater teacher who ever lived in whoever lived in Jesus knew the best way to get his message across was making connection to which people would be able to relate. Jesus used common acts um, an example as an illustration for truth was a key to help those whose heart were open to understand. It was also a key to protect truth from being abused by those who were not listening with open hearts. Jesus knew those who came to listen to him teach would understand the daily action of others around them. They would understand the daily actions of others around them. They would be quite familiar with the lifestyle of a sower fields of good grains and other fruit bearing plants surrounded on the harvest of food and grain for their personal survival. Do you know, Jesus became, his, became um, 
began his lesson introducing the sower of the crop. The sower was not expected to do anything other than generously throw the seed on the ground that had been prepared for planting. The sower was not responsible for the rain that would nurture the crop or the sun that would provide nutrients required of growth. The sower's responsibility was to sow the seed and watch the miracles of growth. You and I, we are sower. That's all we have to do. That's what God called us to do. Sow the seed. And I got some pictures of um, um, the board. That's all we have to do. Serving God, all we do is sow the seed. Remember, when new souls comes here, don't go to them and tell them you can't wear that. You can't be like that. Don't do that. That's not so messy. Whoever comes in here, comfort them. Welcome them. Show them where they want to proceed. Amen? That's our job, you and I. Love the person. Introduce the person to one another. Make them feel welcome. But let the word of God do the rest. I remember one day I was working in uh, my old work. Um, I worked there for six years. And then uh, a friend of mine, we worked together. She asked me one day, um, Eddie, you're so old style. You know, it would be nice if you put up some makeup and put some earrings on. It looks good on you. But I haven't, so, I haven't seen you wear that. Why you don't? You don't want a fashion style? Why you don't want to wear all that? You always like that all the time. I look at my friend and I said, well, this is what I'm going to say to you. My Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 14, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his work and that my soul knows very well. If my God said, if my God said that, to me that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. And then I put all those earrings and those makeups. That means I'm telling my God that the way he created me was wrong. He created me in a wrong way. What do you think? This friend of mine looked at me, not even say anything. She can answer me back. And then I said, that's why I don't want you to do that. Because when he created me, he created me fearfully. Can you imagine when you do something, you want to do it perfectly, and you're thinking, oh my God, this work has to be done perfect, perfectly. I don't want you to make a mistake. It has to be done this way. It has to be done this way. Making sure there's no mistake. That's how my God done. That's how my God works in me. When he created me, that's how he did it. Why should I come and waste my time putting on this and putting on that? I didn't... I didn't do it in a, in a rude way, but I do it in a comfort and a loving way. And that's how we have to do it with people. When they ask us questions, make sure that you answer them properly in a loving way, because that's how you plow the seed. Amen. Jesus compared the sower to those who share the gospel. He says in Mark 4 and 14, as you and I share the word of God with others, we are sowing the seed of the truth into their hearts. We must sow generously to reap the most abundant harvest. It's our responsibility to spread the gospel to every living soul. The Bible says in Mark 16:15, this was Jesus speaking to his disciples. 
Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It doesn't matter whether they are black or white, tall or small, whatever. Their life is whatever circumstances they go through. Prophecy. I know some people, they will like look at you and, yeah, right. But be, be nice to them. You will know the time that you will plow it. We are compelled to sow the seed. If the commission seemed, seems urgent when Jesus commanded it, it's even more urgent now. Romans 10, 14 says, ask the question, how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher is someone who's proclaiming the gospel. From that perspective, we could say every believer is a preacher in, to, in the sense other translation right. How can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Whether we call ourselves a preacher or not, we are all commissioned to share the gospel. Amen. The farmers generously sow seed and then wait for the harvest. If some of the seed fall on unprofitable ground, he does not lose heart and give up. He keeps sowing because he knows his work will eventually produce a successful harvest. We all go through that. There are some of our friends and neighbors, we keep on telling them about the goodness of God. We keep on telling them about the love of God. And some of them don't care at all. Don't worry about it. Just remember the job that God tells you to do. So, the seed. Never give up on sharing the word of God. There will be a talk. Oh, goodness. Every time we go to Sister Heather's house and gay, they always talk about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Right? Don't worry about it if people talk like that. Don't worry what they say. You keep on doing what you, got, what you have to do. You're just obedient. Just be obedient to the word of God. That you're a sower and you are spreading the seed. We must be generous in proclaiming the word of God to others. Even though the word is not always received by the hearer, we are not discouraged. You and I faithfully continue to sow. Years after years, because we are confident in the principle of the seed. Morning, Cyril. Morning. Whatever we sow, the Bible said whatever we sow will reap. All of us know that when this church started, it started with the Pillay family and the Beats. There were only five of them. And years after years, months after months, Gabby came along. The now, the Beats, they left and the Pillay are still here, continue. That is a very long time. Most of us here, I think some of us just came in five years, We've been here five years, six years, but they started it. I don't know how many years they they were they were here. Probably more than 20 years, but it's a long years, isn't it? They plow the seed. I'm sure it was not easy because sometimes, Cassandra said that sometimes I give up. I wanted to give up. There's only five of us. Some people come, some people go. Most of them, when they come, they just come here the word of God and they left. They never stay. And that's okay. Keep on plowing the seed. They started it, they plowed the seed from all these years. And look at us, how many of us are here now? It's like a big family, isn't it? We need to be patient while sowing, even when we get tired. We can come on a successful harvest of soul if we sow generously and never give up. Any farmer, they will know the good seed 
and a bad one. But we know the word of God is a good seed. Any doctrine other than the truth of the gospel would be a bad seed. The Bible says, 1 Timothy 6, 3 and 4, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold sailors' words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. If you and I are faithful to preach the truth from God's word, it is always a good seed. If seed does not flourish, it does not mean it is a bad seed. It may be the condition of the harvest heart or the hearer's heart. All we can do is plant the good seed and pray the hearts of those who received it will be soft and fertile ground. A perfect condition for the seed to grow. Sometimes the growth of the seed depends upon the type of soil it falls on. I put up, I got some pictures for the different soil that the seed falls on. Sometimes the soil is like that. Sometimes you'll be planting seed in the soil and it'll be like that. Don't worry about it. God will do the rest. All you do, just plant it. It's going to be a bad soil. Sometimes it's going to be a good soil. Sometimes it's going to be a dry soil. But keep on sowing. Sometimes some seed that you so failed to grow landed on the ground that was not conductive to help grow. Some landed on a hard packed ground where people walk and birds came and gobbled it up. Just like that. Sometimes fell among the weeds and plants with thorns that choke out the good seed. That's the one. It is essential for the good earth to have plenty of seed to bring forth a harvest. That is why the sower is generous with the seed. He so far and why? Because he knows the seed that grows will be the seed that falls on a good soil. We must share the, the, the we must share God's word with everyone we can. Being generous has we spread the, the the gospel. Sorry. Some of the seed we generous, generously sow will fall upon rich, soft, moist soil ready for the word. Those are hungry souls where we long to plant the wonderful truth of the gospel. Those seeds have the, have, have the, the greatest potential to flourish and grow, bringing a harvest and more seed to be sown later. We should desire our hearts be conditioned not only to hear the word of God, but also to soak it up and obey the principle taught from the truth. Soil that has been conditioned is soil that has been tiled, fertilized, rid of all stone that hinder growth. You and I are responsible for the condition of our hearts. If there is any malice, hypocrite, envy, or evil, bad intention, it must be removed. The Bible says it in 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. Unforgiveness is another stumbling stone that hinders growth in our hearts. Holding on to any, anything that would cause problems, absorbing the truth of God's word is not wise. We must have a forgiving heart to understand God's forgiveness for us, as the Bible says in Mark 11, 
25. God bless us. Amen. Let us stand. And let us pray. Father, we thank you once again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that was delivered this morning, oh God. Lord, help us to be obedient in your word. Help us, oh Lord, to keep on doing what you want us to do, is to sow the seed. Doesn't matter, oh God, what people that we met, who they are, what circumstances they go through. Help us, oh Lord, to keep on spreading the word. There are hungry people out there, they need you. There are hungry people out there, Lord, they wanted to hear your word. They're looking for peace, oh God, they're looking for patience, they're looking for love, and they're looking for compassion, God. Lord, hallelujah, help them, oh Jesus. Let your hand reach out to them, oh God, and help them, Lord. Let your word, oh God, be healed in their heart. Let your word, oh God, reach out to them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you once again for this morning. Lord, thank you for your word. For thy word, oh God, and hidden in my in our hearts, oh God, and we may not sin against them. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. We give you the honor and the praise that is due to you and to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Praise God. Sunday school offering.